They wrote in the Constitution that we as God's people were created equal, that we should not be bound by no man. And God created all of us to be free from the very beginning. To be free, he created Adam and Eve to be free. And no doubt they enjoyed the freedom that God had intended for all mankind until they fell into slavery. Slavery of sin. When Satan sent them into sin and they now were free, no longer free. Free to enjoy all of the blessing that God had in for them. I come to share with you today, brothers and sisters, in order for us to be defend the freedom that God give us, we must know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. Jesus must set us free. I know that there are those who are seeking freedom from many things. There are those who are seeking freedom, freedom be from the families, freedom from Freedom, and they say, I want to be free. And they are looking for freedom and looking for it in drugs, looking for it in sexuality, looking for it here and there. But I stop by this evening to share with you there is no real freedom than in Jesus Christ. But Jesus declared, If I set you free, you are free indeed. We find uh, this freedom that we enjoy today in this land was based upon uh, God setting us free. Our forefathers started out believing and trusting in God. They placed upon their money in God we trust. They stated that as they signed the Constitution, they prayed earnestly that God would bless and bless this nation. They put their lives on the line, for they knew that they could be put to death, and yet they were willing to suffer. Yes, as we talk about freedom today, we know that there's a price, always a price for freedom. Or we talk about freedom and say, it's free, but no, I share with you there's a price. Our full pain paid a precious price for your freedom today. Amen. To be able to gather here in this sanctuary to worship God, a precious price was paid. To be able to have the freedom to speak, to say what you want to say, a precious price was paid. To be able to have the freedom to go wherever you want to go and, and do some of the things that you will do in, in, in account with the law, a precious price was paid. Amen. Yes, we celebrate today. We celebrate as the 13 colonies came together and agreed that they would no longer be subject to Britain, no longer be subject under their laws and regulations, but they felt that they should be free from under the pressure to worship God. And this was the main thing that they were seeking, the freedom to be able to worship God, to serve Him. Even starting from Columbus, Christopher Columbus, as he set sail to find this new nation, we find Christopher Columbus saying that I was led by the Spirit of God to move forward to discover a new nation so that God's word and the gospel may be spread throughout. Yes, our forefathers had this in mind of spreading the word of God. This was their ultimate goal, that people would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We see Quentin Alton also saying that I, I desire that everybody be able to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And for this reason, we seek this freedom. Yes, that should be our mission and our goal still today. And as we think of it today, I would like to use as a theme for us, Take Me Back. Or our four parents sung a song when they realized that they had forgotten about the goodness of God and His mercy. They were saying, Lord, take me back. 
Take me back to that place where I first believe. Take me back to that place where I first find your grace and mercy. Yes, take me back. And we as God's people today need to come to that point of saying, Lord, take me back to the point where our forefathers believed and trust in you. They came to this nation seeking freedom, seeking that the word of God be spread throughout the land. Lord, take us back. Yes, we need to go back. As we look at our land and our nation today, many have forgotten about God. They have forgotten about Jesus Christ and the rules and the revelation. We find even with the children of Israel, as they came out of bondage, we find God giving them a revelation saying, now when you get into this, when you multiply and have good homes, when everything is working good for you, don't forget about the Lord. Amen. Yes, that should be our choice today. We have moved into a new land, a land where we have plenty, a land where we have plenty even to throw away, a land where we fail to realize that it is by God's goodness that we are here, a land where we've forgotten about our blessing come down from God. Oh, we need to pray and sing our four parents. Lord, take me back. Take me back, Lord, uh, to the time when I didn't have, when I call upon your name. Take me back, Lord, when I didn't have such a fine automobile, when I had to walk. And as I walked along, I talked to God and asked him to bless me. Lord, take me back. Yes, we need to ask God to take us back. Many of us have forgotten about God. Yes, as they move into this new land and seek the freedom from the colony of Britain, they were looking at serving God and worshiping God, the triune God, not just any God, but the triune God. And we look at the signers of the Declaration of Independence. They tell me that of those 56 that signed their name on the dotted line, that all except three of them believe and trust in the triune God. All but three of them called upon the name of God and went down and prayed, asking God's blessing. Yes, we need to go back and pray. We need to pray. Our nation is in a shamble today. There's division, there's fussing and fighting, there's killing, and we know that God's word says when we turn away from him, God says when we turn and keep on going away from him, that he would turn us over to a reprobate mind. He would turn us over and all kind of things would happen. Yes, if we look at that today, God no doubt probably have turned some of us over when we see so much going on in our world today. When there are those who claim pride or and no here as our nation sometimes is set aside and honor that. Some declaim that I have this right and that right. Fighting for this right and that right. And even they have the name pride. Oh, I think about that and think about it and then I think about what God's word said about it. Those six sins that God hate. Number one was pride. Amen. Pride. Amen. Yes, we need to go back. Lord, take us back to the time when we put our trust and confidence in you. Lord, take us back when we had to call on your name. The world today have so many gadgets and so many things that they don't think that they don't need God. They don't need God. I, I don't need God. I, I have all that I need. Why should I call upon the name of God? But we need to go back to the psalm as he says, Psalm 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh 
all of my help. We need to realize that all of our help comes from the Lord, Amen. the God who made both heaven and earth, the God who created this world that we enjoy today, the God who is still watching over and protecting this world today. Yes, Lord, take me back. As individuals, as church members, as we look at the church today, back when the churches was full, because they knew that they needed God help. They came daily to the house of God to worship, to hear God speak to them, to offer that forgiveness of their sin because they have run through the week and they have done and said all of these things and they wanted the blessed assurance that their sins were taken away and they came and they filled our churches. Lord, we need to go back when we realize that we need daily our sins. We need that our sins forgiven. Yes, we talk about the freedom of the Lord, but I want to share with you that there is no greater freedom than the freedom that Jesus gave. And that was a great price paid for our sin. That he lost. Yes, we talk about blood being shed. Yes, his blood was on an old ragged cross that the sins of the world might be taken away. Oh, what a great price our Lord paid for us. And yet still he stand with outstretched arms pleading that we will come and realize that he had paid a great price for us. Yes, the sins and so many today go back into bondage. We hear in Galatians God, St. Paul, tell us, let no man or anything lead you back into bondage, that God has set you free. And we need to know that, that God has set us free. And we need not to go back into bondage, but know that we do that every day. Every day that we sin, we move back, and the chains are put on us again. And I'm so glad that we have a gracious God. A God says to us, uh, if you confess your sin, that he is just and will cleanse us and forgive us of all of our sin. We can come running to the throne of God, pleading, Lord, forgive me of all of my sin. And this gracious and merciful God will forgive us over and over and over again. He set us free. He set us free from the bondage of sin. This is the great price that has been paid for our sin. And yet, we are to serve God. As we travel back from Lexington, Kentucky, we stopped in at Abraham Lincoln birthplace. We spent some time looking and walking and listening to the tapes and all there. And one of them said that Lincoln had gone to a slave auction. There they were auctioned off slaves. And he stood there and there was a girl that had been mistreated and beaten down. And he looked at her and he bought her. And he said to her, after he bought her, the little girl said to him, now what are you going to do to me? Oh, everybody else has mistreated me. Everybody else has done this. What are you going to do to me? And he said, I'm going to set you free. Free, she said. Really free? Can I go or do whatever I want to do? And he said to her, yes, you can go wherever, do whatever, you are free. Mm -hmm. And the young lady said, I'll go with you and serve you. I said that to say, my brothers and sisters, this is what each and every one of us should say to our God. Amen. Who set us free. Yes, we too have been beaten down and mistreated by Satan. We have been entangled with him in a battle that we uh, couldn't win by ourselves. But thanks be to God that he has in and have won the battle for us. And he has set us free. And now that he has set us free, our goal should be, Lord, I'll go for you. I will serve you until I die. That ought to be 
each and every one of us. And I pray today that you leave here today knowing that Jesus has paid a great price to set you free. And I pray that you would declare, I will serve the Lord until I die. I will serve you, God. I'll go with you. May he bless you today. And may he keep you is our prayer. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all men understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus as we celebrate the freedom that God has given us. Amen. amen.